Hi, here's JNM with a new ZBrush video about the array mesh and the new live boolean in ZBrush for R8. I've been asked if these features can be combined. Well, the short answer, yes. The longer but also short answer is the example shown in this video. So here I'm in ZBrush and I have three quite low poly subtools here. When I draw the poly frame, you can see that this is actually a really low poly model. And I will append a new subtool now and use the array mesh to create some kind of small ribs to the top of this model that I just highlighted. So here is my new subtool and I switch to initialize and press Q cube to produce a very low poly cube model. Okay, then I will move it with the new gizmo and scale it down. Then I bring it to position like here. Then I will scale for this axis as well. Okay, and now let's activate the array mesh. Okay, and once it is activated, you can play around with the settings. In our case, this is the X amount. This is the size in X direction that all the contained items of the array will have. And the other one is of course the number of items. And this is called the repeat. The repeat is currently set to six, but I will increase this Let's try 12 and then again increase the X amount. Just play a little bit around with these values till you are happy with the result. Let's try 16 and you can see I can always work on this one item and it affects all the other ones. So let's use this to our advantage. I activated the C modeler brush, then I delete this edge loop in the middle and then insert some polys. Okay, then I bring this in using Q mesh and activate the dynamic subdivision and as you can see all the changes that I make for my one template are reflected on the items of the array. Okay let's stop editing this one item now. This is just to show you how this array mesh works. And have a look at my live boolean button. It is activated. This means if I would create a boolean mesh now out of this array mesh and the underlying subtool, for which I by the way set the start flag in the subtool list, then these would be merged to one mesh. But it is unioned, it is not subtracted. So to demonstrate the subtraction with an array mesh, and the live booleans, I will do the same as before. I will add a new Q cube as a new subtool. Again, scale and rotate this. And then bring it to position so that it will cut right through this underlying subtool. Okay, great. And now let me again activate the array mesh for this. And set the parameters repeat and X amount. I will again add dynamic subdivision to this. 
have some nice bevels. And then I set this to subtract. And here's the live result. All the items of the array cut here through this underlying mesh. And now we'll scale this up so that it will cut through the left side of the subtool as well. And only this submodel is affected by the boolean operations because I set it as the start group. So the other two submodels above are not affected. And I can still grab here my gizmo and the first item of the array and scale it, rotate it, move it around as I like and the live boolean operation is updated. Okay, the last thing that I want to show you is actually to create the boolean mesh. You just press this make boolean mesh then I select the new tool that is created and have a look at this. This new tool is just the result of my live boolean operations with these two array meshes. Well guys, I really hope you find this video useful and if you like my channel, then subscribe. New content comes at least three times a week, so don't miss it. Thanks for watching this video, thanks for your support and come back soon to JNM.